The topic of this section is chain rule. Chain rule tells us how to differentiate a composite function. First, we will repeat the chain rule for a function of one variable, and then we will generalize this to a vector function of a vector argument. Let me start with a simple example. If we have the function fx sine of 2x, then the derivative is derivative of sine is cosine, we copy the argument and we multiply by the derivative of the inner function which is 2x, which is 2. In general, if we have the function f composed of two functions g and a, in other words, f and x is equal to g at a at x. Then the derivative of f is the derivative of g times the derivative of a. In a better notation, f derivative at x is g derivative at a of x times a derivative at x. The argument is the inner function, which was 2x in the previous example. It is easy to illustrate or sketch the, the proof of this theorem, because the derivative can be written as df dx, and the number, the result of f, is equal to the result of g. So we can write it dg dA times dA dx. If you look at the derivative as a fraction of two differentials, then if you reduce dA, you have d, uh, dg, which is equal to df divided by dx. So this was for function from R to R. That means one real argument, in other words, a scalar argument, and one real result, in other words, a scalar function, a scalar result. Now let us generalize this to a function which is from Rn to Rm. Then we could call it a vector function of a vector argument. Let me give you an example. The function f arrow can have, say, uh, to have some simple example, let's consider n is 2 and m is also 2. So f arrow as a vector will have two components, f1 and f2. And the argument x arrow will have again two components x1, x2. Uh, I have chosen two, two, but the, the dimensions, the number of components may be different. An example of such a function may be f1 at x1, x2 can be say x1 squared plus x2 squared and f2 at x1, x2 may be, say, uh, x1, uh, 2x1 minus 3x2. So we have not just one, we have several arguments as input variables, and we have not just one, but several components of the results. These two lines can be written in a single line that f arrow at x1, x2 is the pair of results, namely these two. And we can write it either as a column vector or as a row vector. Uh, for these purposes, uh, this makes no difference. Well, I prefer the, vector, uh, the, the column vector, so let me write it this way. x1 squared plus x2 squared and 
2x bar minus 3x2. And similarly, as we have derivative for a function of one variable, we can also consider derivative of such a vector function over a vector argument. But as we have not one but two functions, we will have two functions, two derivatives. And as we have not just one argument but two or more arguments, we can consider partial derivatives with respect to one individual argument. So we have two inputs and two outputs. So we have how many? How many first order derivatives? What do you think? Stop me now for a second and try to answer the question. What will be the number of the first order derivatives? Yes, four. We can consider the derivative of the first function with respect to the first argument. Here is the first function and the first function and the derivative will be 2x1 plus 0. Then we can differentiate once again the first function, but this time with respect to the second argument. 0 plus 2x2. And the same for the second component of the result, for the second function. 2 with respect to x1. Here is the formula for x2. And when we differentiate with respect to x1, we have 2. And finally, we can have uh, f2 with respect to x2. Here is the formula for x, for f2, and the derivative with respect to x2 is minus 3. <coughs> now, it is convenient to write these results, these derivatives, into a single matrix called the Jacobi matrix. That will be the derivative of the first function with respect to the first argument, the derivative of the first function with respect to the second argument, the derivative of the second function with respect to the first argument, and finally f2 x2, which is in our case 2x1, 2x2, 2 minus 3. And if you give me the numerical value for x1 and x2, I can evaluate not just the function, I can evaluate the Jacobi matrix. If we have not just one but more functions, then we write a subscript here to denote Jacobi matrix of which function it is. So if we have the function f, it would be j sub n. And if we want to arrive at a result similar to this one, sometimes we can denote this even f prime. But this is dangerous. f prime usually means a derivative of a scalar function of a scalar argument. Here we mean the Jacobi matrix of the first order derivatives of a vector function of a vector argument. Well, and in the next section, we will generalize the chain rule for functions like that.